So one of the things that I found really interesting about the Sony a7 IV is that the build quality is quite similar to that of the Sony a7S III. So of course the Sony a7S III is the video-centric version of the a7 line. Um, but that being said, could the Sony a7 IV be the cheaper alternative to the Sony a7S III? Let's find out in today's video. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Tech360 video. Um, today we are taking a look at the Sony a7 IV. Um, so yes, the Sony a7 IV is a hybrid camera, so it can do videos and photos relatively well. So I've had this camera for about close to three weeks now, and I even shot a car commercial with it a couple of days ago, doing both photos and videos. So I would say like I have quite a comprehensive testing period with the camera. So I had friends asking me if the Sony a7 IV is actually a cheaper alternative to the a7S III. That being said, uh, the reason for that is because the camera itself can do quite a bit of uh, different function in comparison to the a7 III which is its predecessor. Today we'll be going through some tests to see if this really stands up and how can it be compared to the a7R IV and the a7S III. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about the design aspects of the a7 IV. In terms of design, the Sony a7 IV is quite similar to that of the a7S III and Alpha 1. Uh, and what I mean by that is that the body itself is very similar. Too bad I don't have a a7S III or an A1 to show you guys, but in comparison to its predecessor, the a7 III, the hand grip is actually a lot beefier now. And in my opinion, I actually prefer this grip. Um, because my hands are, I would say, like relatively larger than average, uh, but it fits really nicely in my hands. So talking about the body, it is made out of magnesium alloy, and in terms of weight, it will weigh 658 grams with one battery and the SD cards as well as the CF Express together with it. But Comparing it to the a7 III and the a7 IV, there are quite a number of differences when we are comparing and looking at these cameras uh, separately. So first and foremost, the sensor size is 33 megapixels, so the a7 III was 24, I believe. And you have a fully articulating screen now, which is also touchscreen, which is really nice. Um, in terms of the buttons, there has been quite a number of changes in terms of the layout of the button. So the record button is now slightly above, closer to the shutter button than before. And where the exposure compensation dial used to be, it is now a, uh, what Sony calls it, an R dial, which you can customize it to um, change different settings within your camera, which is quite handy because to be honest, I so far in my career, I've never used the exposure compensation dial before. So I like now that I can actually change it to something else. Um, let's see what else. So in terms of uh, ports, this is also another thing that's different from the a7 IV and the a7 III. Before you had a micro HDMI port, but now you have a full-size HDMI, which is really nice. Um, and in terms of card slot, you'll still be having dual SD card slot, so UHS-2 for both, uh, with the inclusion of a CF Express Type A with uh, slot 1. So you only have one slot for a CF Express Type A. In terms of battery, similar to that of a A7 III, so it is a NPF Z100 battery. So in terms of battery life, almost similar to the A7 III. That's about it for in terms of the design of the camera, but this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. When you dive deeper into the A7 IV and its features and specs, this is where it really truly stands out as a camera on, on its own. So in terms of photos and stills, you'll be expecting a burst rate of up to 10 FPS. So this is both electronic and mechanical shutter. 14-bit um, RAW files as well as 10-bit HEIF and JPEG files. So uh, in terms of autofocus, the camera does great. I haven't had any issues where it was uh, breathing in and out and I uh, had difficulty tracking the subjects. This camera does really well in terms of autofocusing. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention is that in terms of autofocusing modes, you only get animal and human eye autofocus. There is no vehicle autofocus in this uh, and the reason being is probably because it is not focused so much on high-speed photography since it can only shoot up to 10 frames per second. When it comes to ISO settings, this camera does 50 all the way up to 204,800. Yes, you heard me right, 204,800 which is insane. So I have sample images coming up um, and Sony has uh, marketed the camera to be in such a way that it has low noise rendering even at high ISO. So we'll test that out to see if that is true. 
In terms of video, the A74 does uh, do a lot better in terms of like the different uh, settings that you can use and also a high burst rate shooting mode which isn't available in the A7S III. So the A74 does shoot in 4K60 at 422 10-bit, however, you're going to be expecting a 1.5 times crop. So in relevance to a full-frame sensor, you would be expecting something closer to the Super 35 range. Um, but that being said, you can still shoot high frame rates with the 1080p function uh, up to 100 frames per second or 120 frames per second. So loads of different menu settings that you can change within the a7 IV for its video functions. You can change like the different um, bit rates and there, there were so many to begin with and it took me a little bit of time to get used to it but after a while I stuck closer towards the X XABC uh, S because that was uh, around the mid tier. So in order to shoot like higher um, bit rate files, you of course have to use a compatible SD card or a CF Express Type A. So just to take note of that. In terms of the new features uh, when it comes to video, they, the A74 does have this interesting feature that I've used quite a bit and it comes in quite handy and it's the AF assist function. So what it does is that when you're shooting on autofocus, you can actually twist the uh, focus ring and the camera will recognize that and switch to manual focus temporarily. Uh, so this comes in handy when you're shooting, let's say, a sliding shot and you want to change the focus from the tree perhaps and then to something else. And you can override that very quickly by just turning the focus wheel. So another interesting feature that is in the A74 is also this thing called the focus map. And what it does is basically it shows you on your screen what is focused and out of focus through colored squares. It's it's some new feature that I haven't actually seen before, um, but to be honest, I didn't really find it handy, but it might be handy to you. Okay, so in terms of the performance when it comes to shooting video on the a 74 I it is quite unfortunate, but during my testing period, I have found the camera to overheat quite often, and this was using 4K 25p. I wasn't even shooting at 4K 50, um, but it overheated quite in a couple of few instances. So what I mean by that was uh, I was shooting it in air-conditioned rooms and different ambient temperatures. In the beginning, I thought it was probably because I was shooting outdoors and it was in the heat, but when I brought it into a, an air-conditioned room and still continue trying to shoot at 4K25, I still received that overheating warning. So there is a setting within the menu system that you can choose and it is the auto power off temperature. So you can either choose to select it on standard or high and uh, for my case, I was shooting it on standard and it overheated but I have had instances when I set it on high and it was still exactly the same result. So in terms of how fast it overheats, so shooting at 4K25, uh, we were expecting about 10 to 15 minutes and then I started to get that warning. So you can turn off the camera and turn it back on and you'll still be able to continue shooting. However, uh, after a few minutes, you'll still receive the warning which made me want to rely more on the 1080p function instead of the 4K for the a 74 So in the beginning of the video, I did mention that the Sony a 74 has low noise rendering even at high ISO. So this camera does really well in uh, high ISO settings, I presume. So I actually took it to the test. So if you guys are familiar with the other reviews, I usually go down to this little alley where I shoot the ISO settings. So we are here once again, and I took these photos last night. So um, I would say, all the way up to ISO 25600, noise comes off as green and it's still usable, the colors aren't too fuzzy but things start to get a little bit murky when we are looking onwards of 51200 and after that, everything is just unusable. So we, I tested it all the way up to 102400 and things were just totally like, the colors were very murky, the noise was just uh, too much. So I would say if you are shooting anywhere below 25,600, the photos are still usable. When it comes to video though, the ISO reacts slightly differently. And what I mean by that is, it depends on the color profiles that you are shooting in. So I tested it when uh, I was shooting on a standard color profile and using it at probably like 6,400 ISO. The grain and noise comes off a little bit subtly. It's not too much, but when I'm shooting it in s and because it's a flat color profile, after I push it through, quite an intense grading session. You can see the noise coming out very visibly and it, it doesn't just come off as green, it comes off as like really fuzzy um, colors, color fringing. And I'll show you a sample uh, video where that happened but just take note of that when it comes to video. But other than that, I would say the ISO, uh, even pushing it with this camera, it does really well in both photos and videos.
So right now we are trying to keep things a little bit more casual and we are doing, we're moving on to the real world testing portion of the video. So in terms of the real world test, I want to test the auto focusing system and of course the burst rate of the photo for the Sony a7 IV. Um, but other than that, what I really want to focus more is the video, uh, video portion of the a7 IV. Reason being is that um, one thing I forgot to mention was they have this new color profile which is the s tone and I believe it was incorporated from the Sony Cinema uh, camera line which is quite interesting. So I personally used it and I think it's quite nice. It's kind of in between like s log flat and also standard color profile. Um, and to be honest, if you don't want to grade it, you can even just use s tone itself. Okay, so right now I'm trying to find, to see if I can find some animals. Uh, to show you how the autofocusing does in terms of the animal eye uh, autofocus. But uh, yeah, I, I guess we can try shooting that bird over there. Let me just get the right settings first. So if you look in the menu system, it's not only human and animal, but you can even select birds. So since we're in the park, we're at Fort Canning right now, we will try, let's, let's select bird. And I'll choose the right focus area. And let's see if this works. So by the way, I have a 2470 f2.8 right on, uh, right now. Wait, where did the bird go? <laughs> Great, okay, now I have to find another bird. Oh, there's a bird there. Okay, let's try not to scare it off. I don't know what bird this is, but let's see. Oh man. This is tough. Oh wow. Okay, so the camera actually locked on to and recognized that it was a bird and locked on to its eye even though there's a lot of foliage in between and to be honest, the bird wasn't even that big in the frame so I'm quite impressed by that Yeah, just know that this is actually the first time that I'm testing the uh, animal and bird eye autofocus in particular but yeah, the bird is really quite deep in there let's see if I can get another shot Where'd he go? <laughs> Okay, but I did get it, so I guess I'll just settle for that, otherwise the video will be too long of me chasing birds. So, safe to say, the animal and bird autofocus actually works, and it works quite accurately to be honest. But I did find some trouble when there was a lot of foliage in between, but understandably because uh, there's, there's just a lot of things going on. But even then, it was quite impressive to see that uh, even though the bird was really small in the frame, the camera still actually managed to catch on to the bird and recognize where, the, where its eye was. So for this test, I want to show you guys how much crop factor you'll be expecting when you're shooting 4K uh, 50 or 4K 60 as compared to 4K 25. So the exact settings that I'm using right now is uh, XAVCS in 4K and uh, I'm shooting on a standard color profile, so 4 to 2, 10 bit. So let's roll the first segment. Okay, so that's done. And then I'll move on within the menu system to change from 25p to 50p. And just take note that I didn't change any settings at all, just the uh, the resolution of the video image, the video file. Um, and this is the exact crop that you'll be getting. So one thing that I found particularly useful or you would say not as useful is that even though the a 74 cannot shoot 4K60 or 4K50 full frame, but if you use a wide enough lens, you will still be able to capture a relatively wide image. And even though in the uh, Super 35 frame, you're still getting the full pixel readout. So it'll still be exactly 4K in the uh, frame that you're shooting. So that's a relief. So one thing that I wanted to mention that is different from the a7 III to the a7 IV is this, um, this dial right here. So you can switch between the stills, video, and S and Q right all within uh, a finger's click. So before you had to go into the menu system, but everything now is just so quick and easy to switch. So we just concluded the shot for the 100 frames per second uh, in 1080 on the a 7 IV. So one thing that I wanted to point out is that the when you're shooting at 100p, you're only going to get 420 and 8-bit. So there is no setting that you can choose 422 at 10-bit. Um, but well, I guess um, looking off the screen right now, it still looks pretty clean to me but we'll have to definitely go back home and look through the footage on a bigger screen to tell if there's really any difference from an 8-bit and 10-bit footage. 
but still definitely usable and hopefully really silky smooth. Okay, so in terms of color profiles, there's quite a number of color profiles that you can choose from uh, from the standard S Lock 2, S Lock 3. And what I really want to test here is the S Cine Tone in comparison to S Lock and of course the standard uh, color profile. I framed this shot up really nicely right now and it's quite nice because there's some sunlight coming in, there's enough uh, darks and shadows to test out the dynamic range between the color profile. So I'm just going to go right ahead to roll the first shot. And for the first shot, I'm shooting at 4K 25p. So we'll do all 4K 25p at uh, 422 10-bit. So the first one will be the standard color profile and then we will jump straight into the s -Cine tone and s 2 and then 3. Alright, so reviewing the footage now, the standard color profile is just a reference for you guys to see uh, what it looks like when it's standard. And then we move on to the s Lock 2. So this is a lot flatter as compared to the standard color profile. The highlights are really, really crushed. Uh, not, not crushed, they're really flat as well as the black. So you retain a lot of details in it. So uh, in film terms, there's more dynamic range in the shot. And when we move on to s Lock 3, it is even flatter than s Lock 2. So, not much of a difference in terms of flatness. One is just more flat than the other. But the interesting thing to, that we want to review is the s -Cine tone, And I would say like the s -Cine tone is somewhere in between uh, S-Lock 2 and the standard color profile, but it's closer towards the standard. So it's slightly a little bit more flat, um, but still nice enough and it gives you enough dynamic range if you prefer to do your color grading in post. And uh, you can still be able to retain like to catch back those highlights that might be lost when you're shooting on a standard color profile. So some of you may be wondering if it's worth upgrading the A7 III to the A7 IV. Um, talking about price alone, the A7 IV costs $3,599 and we're talking only body alone. So if you're comparing it to the price of the A7 III now, it costs $700 more. If you're looking at it from a standpoint of a performance and specs, uh, comparison, I would say that the A7 IV does outperform the A7 III in every regard in terms of uh, megapixel readout as well as the capability to shoot at different frame rates for 4K and even high speed 1080p. So if you ask me about my opinion, I feel that $700 is definitely worth uh, the upgrade. But I guess the question that we're all waiting for is that is the A7 IV a cheaper alternative to the A7S III? Unfortunately, my answer is going to be no. The reason for that is because even at 4K 25p, the camera overheats and it overheats quite quickly. So the bare minimum that I'm looking for for a camera that can shoot 4K is obviously 4K 25. And we're not even talking about 4K 50, 4K 60 or even 4K 100. So overheating is a deal breaker for me, unfortunately. And definitely if you're looking for more of a photo-centric camera, look towards the A7R 4 and if you're looking for a camera that can do video really well, the A7S 3 In terms of prices, the A7R 4 is 4999 for the body only. A7S 3 on the other hand is 4899 So it is quite unfair to compare the A7 IV obviously to the A7R 4 or the A7S 3 because it is a camera on its own. It is supposed to be a hybrid camera that can do both photos and videos relatively well. So in terms of uh, professional use, I would have to say the A7 IV is definitely able to um, produce professional results when it comes to photos and videos. And I have used it for a commercial shoot for a car a couple of days ago and the footage comes, came out really, really well. So I would say that the camera no doubt can be produced professionally. If, if you're looking to come into, uh, to pick this camera up as a hobbyist or as a beginner, I would say for the price tag, it fits around, it fits around the mid-tier region. So uh, if you have like 3,599 lying around, the camera is definitely great for you to start out. If not, I would recommend probably looking towards the A7C or even the A7 III. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video so far and uh, I hope the information that I provided you about the Sony a7 IV will better inform you if you should pick up this camera or any of the Sony Alpha cameras out there. So if you're looking for a hybrid camera that can do photo and video, um, and video primarily in 1080p, I would say the camera, the Sony a7 IV is more than capable of uh, helping you achieve your video needs. But uh, as usual, definitely check out all our social platforms and follow us on TikTok, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And uh, if you like my content, you can also check me out on YouTube and Instagram at Ryan Mamba. And as usual, I hope you guys enjoy this Ryan Mamba's perspective and I'll see you guys in the next one.